Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting these super easy and relaxing abstract doodles. Let's get right into it by going over the colors. Firstly, this is Lamp Black by Daniel Smith, Indigo by Schminke, Sharon Brilliant Dark by Schminke, Vermilion by Holbein, Burnt Umber by Holbein, and Grey of Grey by Holbein. I'll also be using my Fine Tech Gold palette. I've been loving muted pastel tones recently, so I'm going to be using mostly warm muted pastel colors for the whole set. For this first color mixture, I use Vermilion with Burnt Umber and Sean Brilliant Dark, and I use a medium to thin consistency with my large brush to paint a circle. I'm using hot pressed paper here so you can really see the textures and the streakiness of the paint. I really don't mind this because I'm actually looking for the uneven textures when I'm painting abstract because I feel like there's a bit more character and a bit more interest to the painting that way. However, you can use whatever paper you have on hand. It will just give a slightly different texture. This first one is super simple. The background is basically just this one circle, but you can of course add more. So I do want to make sure it's completely dry before I add on the leaves on top. To paint on the leaves, I use a thick consistency of lamp black and I switch to my round brush here. You can also use a very small brush, but since my round brush is fairly new, it still comes to a very fine tip. So I'll just be using this to paint the stems as well as the leaves by playing with the pressure of my bristles. To paint on the leaves, I make sure that my brush is facing according to where the leaves are going to face. So the pointiest tip of my brush will be placed where the sharpest tips of the leaves will be. I then drag it accordingly with gradual pressure as I get to the thickest part of the leaves, then finishing it off with the tip of my brush again, so taking off the pressure as I get to the other end of the leaf, which will also be sharp. You can do this with one stroke, but painting with only one stroke for the leaves will give it the same width almost every time unless you're using a larger brush and you're taking advantage of the size of the brush and the pressure. Personally, I like to paint the leaves using a couple of main strokes to paint either sides of the leaves and then just fill in the rest. And of course, to fix the edges to make sure they're nice and sharp. I make sure that there's a fair amount of distance between the individual leaves that I'm painting to the main stem, so the connection line between the leaves and the stem can look very thin and delicate, as opposed to the leaves looking bulky when the connection line is too thick. So from here on, I'm just going to continue painting the leaves until I'm satisfied with how they're placed, the amount of leaves, as well as the composition. Since this painting is very simple and relaxing, I'll also be releasing a real-time version of this painting in a few days with some relaxing background music and no voice over. So you can either paint along in real time with me to this particular painting or even use it as just relaxing background music while you're painting your other projects or to accompany you during work or study time. So I'm just going to paint on a couple more leaves. I felt like there's enough already in this composition, but the overall placement of the leaves themselves is quite low. So I'm just going to scribble something on the top left corner to balance out the whole composition. I decided to use a thick consistency of gold. You can use whatever tone of gold you have. And here I just paint on dots in different sizes. Sometimes it turned out to be oval, sometimes I don't even know what it is, but I just want to fill that space in. 
I'm going to limit the amount I put just to make sure I'm happy with the overall balance so it has a little bit of a diagonal composition. And that's pretty much it for the first abstract doodle. It's super simple. Of course, you can add other elements, but I feel like this has enough going on already. So let's move on to the next one. For this next one, I'm going to start out by using the same color as the previous background. This is from a mix of Burnt Umber, Vermilion, and Jean Brilliant Dark. And I'm just going to create a blob on the left corner here. You can make it as large or as small as you would like. And of course, you can create your blobs in different shapes as well. Once I'm done, I'm just going to dry it off completely so I can layer on other shapes on top of this one. As I'm drying this off, you can see that there's a bloom being formed, but I really don't mind. I feel like this just adds to the abstract feel of the doodle. For the next color, I'm going to use a mix of Grey of Grey, Jean Brilliant Dark, with a bit of Burnt Umber until I create this creamy brown color. And I'm just going to paint on another blob while overlapping part of the blob on top of the previous color. I want these two shapes to stay separate, which is why I had to dry it off. But if you want the color to just merge together and create a beautiful transition in between, you can skip the drying process in between. Since I have two large warm blobs already, I'm going to add a cool color this time as accent. I'm going to use a mix of indigo, gray of gray, and burnt umber to mute the blue and just paint a small circle on the left and then create small brush strokes for the top right section. I'm limiting the amount because this should stay as accent and the warm color should still be the dominant colors. For this one, I'm going to draw a different type of leaves. I'm doing sort of like eucalyptus leaves which are quite long and I made it so it's a bit textured and wrinkly looking. For this one though, instead of doing a full silhouette, I just paint on the outline instead. I'm using my round brush again with a thick consistency of lamp black to paint on the dark outline because the brush still comes to very fine point that's easy to control. So I'm just going to take as much advantage of the brush at this point and I just feel like outlining with a brush makes the weight so much more flexible as you can really control how much pressure you want to put into the outline. You can also achieve something similar to this by using a brush pen or if you don't have access to a brush pen or a really pointy brush, you can just use a normal drawing pen but the line weight will stay the same all throughout. It's not going to look bad or anything, in fact I've done my fair share of doodles just using a normal drawing pen, it's just going to look different to what I'm painting here. You can also paint different types of leaves. Eucalyptus is just something that I've doodled before in my past doodle videos, so I'm just really comfortable drawing out the shapes. This way I can play around with the folds of the leaves as well. You can see I'm approaching this one differently to the first leaf doodle. I'm painting the individual leaves and short stems one by one. Whereas on the first doodle, I painted on the stem for the overall composition first. This is because we're only doing the outline. So if I were to paint on the stems first, I can't really put certain leaves on top of the stem without the line of the stem showing through the leaf. I decided to add seedlings to this composition as well because I feel like it kind of looks cute with the leaves. It doesn't have to be realistic or anything. You can even add on berries or things like that even though these are eucalyptus leaves. You can just basically paint on anything you feel would look good or benefit the composition. So from here on, I'm just going to continue painting on the leaves until I reach the bottom of the page.
I think I have enough leaves so I'm just going to add more seedlings in between where the spaces are and this should just balance out the composition. Next I just want to look at the leaves again and I felt like certain lines are a bit too thin in comparison to the ones at the bottom so I decided to just increase the weight by going over some of the outline. As you can see I'm only going over certain parts of the outline and by thickening the lines it will also suggest a bit of shadow to that part of the leaf. So after I finish going over certain lines, you can pretty much stop here, but I want to make it cohesive with the rest of the set. So I'm also going to add a bit of gold for this one. I'm going to use a very thick consistency of the gold. And there's this champagne color at the top where I mixed it with the yellow gold. And I also added a little bit of lamp black to make the color slightly darker and muted. With this color, I'm just going to paint on a trail with dashed lines. I'm just painting this wiggly line diagonally from the top left until it reaches the bottom right. Once I reach the bottom right, I'm done with the dashed lines and we're finished with the second doodle. Now let's move on to the third one. I'm going to use similar colors for this one. I'm using the first mix again, but this time I use less Jean Brilliant Dark, so the color is a bit darker. This time I'm going to paint thick lines with gaps in between, and I'm going to vary the length. Because I'm painting with a round brush, the ends of the lines are a bit too light, so I'm just going to drag it or just paint it the other way around to darken the corners of the right hand side slightly. Since I didn't really use a heavy load to paint the lines, they should be dry by now. If yours is still wet, you can dry them off first. But here I'm just going to continue on and paint a large blob using this cream mixture from Grey of Grey, Burnt Umber, and Drum Brilliant Dark. Next, I'm going to introduce the accent color, which is a bit cooler. I use a mix of Grey of Grey, Indigo, Burnt Umber, and Jean Brilliant Dark, and this will create a muted pastel green color. I feel like this is enough for the background, but of course you can add more to yours. And I'm just going to dry it off before I paint on the leaves on top using a thick consistency of lamp black. Since the background elements are predominantly on the left side, I'm going to paint on this top right corner where it's still empty. I first added three main branches and I'm going to paint on circle asperis on the ends of the main branches by adding smaller branches growing out of those ends. To paint on the berries, I like to use the tip of my brush and use a circular motion until I'm happy with the size of the circle while leaving out a bit of negative space which will serve as a bit of glossy highlights. And just to add a bit more detail to the berries, I also added very thin hairs on the other end of the berries. I just thought it made the shape look more interesting, but you can also make up your own shapes for your berries as well. I'm quite happy with the amount of berries I have and moving on downwards I'm going to add more leaf silhouette just to fill in a bit more of the space. 
to paint on the leaves I'm just using the same method as before it's up to you if you want to paint on the leaves first or the branches first you can even include different types of leaves if you would like to I decided to double up the line for the main branch of this specific plant just to add a bit more detail but it's completely optional I find that this doodle already has enough detail, I don't want to overcomplicate it, but just to finish it off, I'm going to add a bit of gold shimmer. So I'm using the same mix as before with the gold without the lamp black this time. And I'm just going to draw on a line surrounding one of the blobs and I'm going to go over the shape twice. It's quite hard to get a thick consistency of this paint, which is why you'll see me running out of paint and the load of my brush so I just keep on dipping it over and sometimes I put a bit more pressure so I can get the paint to travel faster out of my brush after painting on the gold shimmer I felt like the bottom right corner here is empty so I just use whatever color I have left on my palette and paint on two brush strokes and that is pretty much it for this third doodle and that's the completed set. I haven't done abstract doodles for a while, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be listed in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!